2022, a year of reform and renewal. During the year 2022, the government of the Virgin Islands recommitted to serving its people through action and sustainable transformation. In January, the British Virgin Islands Ports Authority, BVIPA, released initiatives focused on teaching students about port functions, international trade, and maritime careers. Hello everyone! Are you ready to start your ports learning adventure? The first stop is to learn all about our ports and harbors. Let's go! Visit our website! Newly created Salt Islands Land Advisory Committee, SILAC, established to assist in ensuring the fair distribution of Crown lands on Salt Island. The Cabinet of the Virgin Islands approved the establishment of a management committee for the land at Parakeeta Bay. In February, the Government of the Virgin Islands commissioned six electric shuttles for the City of Roadtown Park and Ride Shuttle Service. This initiative has been long coming and we have been working very hard to bring it to this point of execution. The City of Roadtown Park and Ride Shuttle Service is just one component of a comprehensive initiative to improve the city. The Terence B. Letsom International Airport achieved international accreditation from the Airport Council International. The Water and Sewage Department launched a new customer service and billing system. This new system will ensure that we are able to serve you, our customers, more rapidly, more friendly. Of course, we want to make sure that you are able to understand that your bill is what it is when you've completed payment for one bill. So you'll be able, at the same time, ask our cashiers what your balance on your bill is before we couldn't do that. The Government of the Virgin Islands received the keys to Ventapool Administration Building on Virgin Gorda, and families gifted with homes on Tortola. In March, the Government of the Virgin Islands establishes Office of the Contractor General. The Government of the Virgin Islands successfully negotiated to make lands available for the separation of the Brigado Flax Educational Center Primary and Secondary Division. The British Virgin Islands London Office, BVI London Office, commemorated 20 years of diplomatic service abroad this year with the establishment of BVI House in London. In April, a national local project office was established to achieve development objectives and the sustainable development goals. The Ministry of Education launched a webpage for all matters related to regional and international examinations. 27 graduates of the Employability Skills Training Program received their certificates, and customs duties on imports reduced to 5%. I'm pleased to announce that your government will be taken to Cabinet to have approved an economic stimulus initiative that will have all, all custom duties that are above 5% to be lowered to 5%. In May, the government of national unity was sworn in. I have great confidence in you and in us as a ministerial team. There's a tremendous amount of work to do to begin embedding a new culture and better practices within our institutions and systems of government. This process begins with us. Works commenced on the Carrot Bay revetment project. In June, the Virgin Islands moved closer to the establishment of a Rescue Coordination Center, RCC, with the training of 14 individuals. Framework for the implementation of the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry Report and other reforms proposed to the Government of the United Kingdom was accepted. The BVI Post reinstalled letterboxes around the territory and the Government of the Virgin Islands launched a transition grant program. The Government of National Unity of the Virgin Islands in the CUI implementation framework clearly stated our commitment to transitioning all government assistance grants to the Social Development Department by the end of June 2022. In July, 
The British Virgin Islands financial services industry lauded as the most successful in the Caribbean. Government and statutory body representatives trained to undergo fourth round Caribbean Financial Action Task Force mutual evaluation. A reduction from 7% to 3.5% was enacted on the money services levy. The government of national unity also recognizes that a large segment of our population utilize remittance services. These do not just include those persons who have families living abroad that they have an obligation to support, but Virgin Islanders who have children in school in the United States, in the United Kingdom and elsewhere, who send them some dollars periodically to help them make ends meet. The wastewater treatment plant in Cane Garden Bay, said to be a world-class project, was commissioned and residents of Frenchman's Key now have a first-class bridge. In August, government of the Virgin Islands added another component to the greener, safer, more pedestrian-friendly efforts by way of solar-powered crosswalk signals. The Immigration Department launched Automated Passport Control Kiosk to expedite entry for returning VI citizens to the territory. The government of the Virgin Islands established a unit to support the delivery of the Commission of Inquiry Report, recommendations, and ongoing government reform. And Roadtown Sewage Improvement Project was completed. In September, post office reopens in Cane Garden Bay. Premier and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable Natalio D. Wheatley, paid respects at the funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in London on behalf of the government and people of the Virgin Islands. Works continued on the East End Long Look Sewage Project. In October, the Commission of Inquiry Implementation Unit commenced work on Commission of Inquiry recommendations. Homeowner Ms. Bernadine Brazer and her family received the keys to a brand new home as part of the Government of the Virgin Islands Housing Recovery Assistance Program. Minister for Natural Resources and Labor, the Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull, was nominated to serve as a co-chair of the Conservation Caucus and an OECS Assembly member of the Ninth Council of Ministers of Environment and Sustainability. And the Fish Bay Asphaltic Works was completed. In November, the Virgin Islands was represented at the 11th Commonwealth Youth Parliament held in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Virgin Islands to strengthen partnership at Climate Change Conference in Egypt. Virgin Islands represented at the OECS Fourth Meeting Council of Ministers for Trade. Premier Wheatley announces $399.33 million budget for 2023. And American Airlines adds more Caribbean flying with service to the Virgin Islands. I am elated to announce that we have been given the confirmation to publicly release that starting 1st June 2023, American Airlines will begin direct flights between the Terence B. Letsom International Airport at Beef Island and the Miami International Airport in the mainland USA. And American Airlines have simultaneously issued a press release to this effect. In December, revised Virgin Islands national sports policy taking shape. Government of the Virgin Islands signs MOU for increased border security. Tariffs change for transportation industry after 12 years. Strategic blue economy roadmap approved by cabinet. The Elmore Stout High School redevelopment project completed. During 2022, the Government of the Virgin Islands introduced and amended legislation to enhance the territory's regulatory framework to better serve its people. These include passing of the Virgin Islands Food Security and Sustainability Act, replacing the Business Professions and Trade Licenses Act, CAP 200, with Business Licensing Act 2022, Mutual Legal Assistance Tax Matters Amendment Act 2022, Stamps Amendment Act 2022, International Tax Authority Amendment Act 2022, and BVI Business Companies Amendment Act 2022. 
For accurate and timely information from the government of the Virgin Islands, please visit the website bvi.gov.vg. Like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at BVI Government and on Instagram at GISBVI.